Yes. Dr. Datta Mazumdar, uh, shall we start? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. First of all, a uh, very warm welcome to everybody who is present here. Uh, most of all, thank you very much, Dr. Satrupa Datta Majumdar, uh, for agreeing to have this uh, talk with us, for agreeing to address us on a very, very important topic, something which is very close to the hearts of everybody here at the Society for Endangered and Less Than Known Languages. As you have already, uh, as probably all of you know, you have already been members of the organization. You have come to various talks that we have organized throughout the year, uh, in which Dr. 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 Datta Mazumdar's lecture is today now going to be a series added to the uh, to the continuing series of lectures that we have been doing. Um, we work with endangered languages. We have my, pr primarily worked with the endangered languages of Uttarakhand uh, at, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Kartarastogi, Professor Kartarastogi, and all of you who are members here have worked and are working with one language or another if either it is endangered or it is non-endangered, but majorly we have uh, scholars working in the endangered languages field. So let me, first of all, introduce you to um, our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Satrupa Datta Majundar Saha is a linguist and she did her MA and PhD in linguistics from the University of Kolkata, Calcutta. She has been involved in research and teaching programs in different, different premier institutes like the Central Institute of Indian Languages, uh, Indian Inst Institute of Education for Women, Hastings House, Blind Boys Academy, Ramakrishna Mission, Narendrapur, Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, the Asiatic Society, uh, Kolkata, Indian Council of Social Science Research, New Delhi, and Indian National Science Academy in New Delhi. Her area of research mainly concentrates on the linguistic situation of the speech communities of Northeast India, especially the endangered and marginalized communities of the region. She has worked on the language structures and social linguistic situations of the languages like Ohomia, Bangla, Kanashi, Koch, Lepcha, Oriya, and Tiwa. She has contributed in the area of linguistic historiography of Northeast India with special reference to the Tibeto Burman language family Boro group. But presently, she is working on the linguistic historiography of the Austro Asiatic group of languages with special <clears throat> excuse me, with special reference to Mon Khmer and Munda group of languages. Her area of research being core linguistics, social linguistics, and quantitative linguistics, ethnolinguistics, and linguistic historiography. She has published books and research articles in the areas in uh, in the journals of national and international repute. Today we have her with us to talk about the Kanashi language and we are extremely grateful uh, to her for having agreed uh, to address us. Welcome everyone. Uh, without any further delay, let's quickly listen to Dr. Shatirupa Datta Majumdar's talk on Kanashi, an endangered language of the North West India. Thank you. <clears throat> Namaskar and good evening to all of you present here. Before I begin, I convey my gratitude to the Team Society for Endangered Languages and especially Professor Kavita Rashtogi for inviting me in this platform to share my experiences with you all. My today's discussion will concentrate on Kanashi, an endangered language of Northwest India. Now, I introduce the language first. Um, the language spoken in the Malana village of Kullu district of Himachal Pradesh is widely known by the name Kanashi. Malani is the alternative name of the language. According to ethnologue, the speaker strength of Kanashi is 1400. The number of speakers is 1500 according to a UNESCO report. At the onset of the discussion on the language and the speech, speech community, it is necessary to mention that the members of the speech community residing in Malana village do not recognize the term Kanashi as the name of their mother tongue. Rather, they deny the term Kanashi for their mother tongue. Being asked about the nomenclature of the language which they speak, they return it as apna bhasa, simply meaning one's own language, or at the most, malana bhasa. The speaker prefer the speakers prefer to call their language malani. Probably, the term kanashi is an exonym, 
which is being used by the neighboring communities or the outside scholars. The, <coughs> sorry, the language is lesser known and has no written form. The language has been reported to have no intelligibility with the neighboring languages spoken in Lahul, Spiti, and Kinnor. This has been informed by my Kanashi informant. Kanashi has been referred by UNESCO as definitely endangered. According to the scholars like Sharma 1989, genealogically, Kanashi is identified as a Tibeto-Burman language of Sino-Tibetan language family. The language has been classified as a Kinauri language belonging to West Himalayish group of tibeto kanauri branch of tibeto burman group. It is said to be related with Milchang, a sub-branch of Kinauri group of languages. That Kanashi language is an admixture of Sanskrit and Tibetan varieties has been stated by Bangru and Stronsky in 2002. The data of the present discussion is based on my field investigation undertaken during 2013 and 2014 in the Malana village of Kulu district. Malana Valley is connected by Rashol, a mountain pass via Nagar, Parbati Valley, and Chandrukhoni Pass. The valley can be reached from Jeri, which is two hours drive from Kulu, crossing the Malana powerhouse. Approximately, it requires three to four hours trek to reach Malana via the dam over Parbati River. The height of the, of the Malana village is approximately 10,000 feet above the sea level. Now, before I uh, talk about the linguistic profile, the social linguistic situation of the um, uh, people of the uh, Kanashi speakers, um, I would like to introduce to the uh, people of the Malana village um, um, by, the his, by their history, existing history, that means the oral history, as they do not have any written form, so I depend on the oral history, and I, I will introduce this speech community with the existing oral history that they believe in. The existing views on the history of the land and the people of Malana vary. Um, uh, some are of opinion that people of Malana are the descendants of a group of Greek soldiers who came to India during the invasion of Alexander and made permanent settlements in this area, therefore Western in origin. The villagers claim that they are the descendants of Rakhasha. The myth of the villagers center around the story of the advent of the reputed Indian saint or Rishi, Jamodogni, referred in Mahabharata as an Aryan saint, who had to fight against Rakhasha, referred as non-Aryan group of people indigenous to the land. It, uh, yeah, and this, was, uh, this fight was in order to gain control over the land. Due to his deep prayer and worship of Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar, the Aryan gods, Rishi Jamodogni received a boon from Shiva. Being asked for a place with natural resources, Shiva introduced Jamodogni Rishi to go to Malana. At that time, Malana was under the rule of Rakhasha, probably the original inhabitants of the place. Having been reached there, Jamodogni had to encounter uh, the conflict with the Rakhasha. This resulted into a struggle between the Rishi and the Rakhasha, also called Bonashura. It is a popular story that initially Jamodogni had to suffer in a pan of boiling oil for long 12 years. But as he was a saintly person, he was able to survive. But when the term of Rakhasha came for boiling in a pan of hot oil, the Rakhasha realized that he will be destroyed completely and begged pardon to the Rishi. Jamodogni did, uh, dictated 
the rakshasa to leave malana forever he he wants to survive but the rakshasa bargained his terms and the conflict between rishi and rakshasa came to a halt with some mutual understanding the terms which rakshasa gave are significant to the people of malana and especially this is significant for the maintenance of the present language now what were the terms the first term was the kanashi or the language of malana um, should be maintained by the inhabitants of the malana village secondly the customs and traditions should be followed in social functions like marriage and death rituals and that should be maintained and this is done uh, till today this is maintained till today Uh, thirdly there should be two houses or groups of people to look after administration and judiciary separately these two groups will be elected by the people of malana in consensus it is still maintained in the village and many scholars have referred this two tier system the lower house and the upper house as the oldest democracy of the world rakshasa or banashura should be consulted while selecting the executive body but for the matter of justice the authority will be of jamodogni rishi rakshasa has to be offered food and drink on regular basis at one at least once a day at jyot a place on the, the other side of the parvati valley opposite to the malana village where rakshasa will reside forever so these terms are still maintained today jamodagni rishi agreed to these conditions of rakshasa and made the rakshasa leave the malana village forever but even today the tradition of offering the first sacrifice to the rakshasa during festival is followed by jamodagni rishi is um, um, is followed but jamodagni rishi is worshiped as a god in the village now as far as the language situation is concerned uh, an, an interpretation of the myth uh, an analysis and interpretation of the myth i will present here we all know that language being the set of arbitrary vocal symbols meant for communication shared by an aggregate of people does not change all of a sudden language change shift death occurs in due course of time due to superstrate or substrate language is influence in the ever changing socio political situations the myth which tells us about the maintenance of the language of the ruling rakshasa even after they left the malana village seems to be significant in the issue of maintaining the tibeto burman language which the kanashi people speak at present it is a language which carries within its structure the traces of languages in contact in every probability the ruling ping group which is referred to as rakshasa was a speaker of a tibeto burman language being the dominant language of the ruling class the tibeto burman language was very naturally adopted by the people of the malana village here it is pertinent to mention that so far as the physical feature is concerned resemblance with the indo-european group of people is observed among the kanashi speakers of the malana village by any means their physical features do not resemble with the tibeto burman people as we find in the northeastern part of india although after much struggle jamodogni rishi who is known to be an aryan saint could throw away the ruling rakshasa the indo aryan language web, uh, though they he could throw away the rakshasa the ruling rakshasa the indo uh, indo aryan language variety could not be restored or introduced among the people of malana village thus a tibeto burman variety of language is still found to be maintained in the malana village now i uh, show you some uh, uh, pictures of uh, this is a, a picture of a temple uh, all made up of wood of jamodogni rishi i have clicked this picture from the field from the, the malana village this is the door this is the door <clears throat> now coming to the linguistic profile of kanashi 
first of all, I, I would um, uh, concentrate on the language use in the social uh, domains. As Kanashi is a language which has no written form, the use of the language is restricted to the home and in the village domains. The language of Malana has no place in the educational domain. Education is imparted to the children of Malana village through Hindi. The religious practice is of course done in the Malana language. The religious practice is handed over by the Malana priests orally to their disciples and this system continues for generations. The language of the religious teachings is considered to be a restricted variety of the language by the members of the speech community. As the language has no written form, um, the question of literary activity does not arise. The folk tales and folk songs are there, but these folklores cannot be heard at any time of the year. It is only in the winter months when snow falls, when people are unable to carry out regular activities of livelihood, these folk tales are communicated to Dr. the Dr. older Majumdar, generation. Uh, yes. If you don't mind, um, yes. we are not able to see the slides moving. Are you moving the slides or no? No, uh, this is like there's some. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, thank you. I, I am just sorry. Elaborating. You, I was just wondering. Sorry. No, this I, I'll explain. I, I'm just elaborating the point of language use in the social domain. And uh, while uh, the um, points, the highlights will be presented and I will go on elaborating the situation as we find in the field, okay? So uh, the folk tales and folk songs are there, but these folklores cannot be heard at any time of the year. It is only in the winter months when snow falls, when people are unable to carry out regular activities of livelihood, these folk tales are communicated by the older generation to the younger members of the speech community. In this way, folk tales are handed over to the next generation. Folk songs can be heard only during festivals like Hagri, held in the month of February every year. Field investigation reveals that there is a belief system among the Malana village people that if they uh, tell the folk tales, uh, the stories during other seasons, that is other than winter, then the snowfall will start early that year. So they avoid this traditional storytelling very cautiously during the rest of the year. Folk songs are sung during the festivals in chorus and are continued by relay. Now I come to the point of language use in administration, judiciary, industry and mass media. The language is used in the village level administration and in judiciary. They have their own customary law. The people of Malana have their own system of weaving cloth at the domestic level. Now, this is the sample of the, they, they are weaving. Uh, warm clothes are woven from the wool of the ship for their own use. These are usually not sold in the market. Shoes are traditionally made from the fiber of the hashish plant, which are sold in the outside market of Kulu these days. Therefore, as far as the industry is concerned, the use of their own language along with uh, Kulvi and Hindi is evident. Impact of Hindi through audiovisual media is evident among the people of Malana village. Burying a few people of very old generation, most of the people have proficiency in listening and speaking Hindi. Now I come to orthography. Kanashi, I have already mentioned that uh, the language has no written form till date. So a study of the primary status of the speech sounds was carried out with the initiative of Bomb Bomb Charitable Trust and NGO for the grammatical study of the Kanashi language. Depending upon the study of the speech sounds, an orthographic system has been proposed by the present speaker in Dr. Mujumdar 2014, where a modified set of Roman alphabets has been used for representing the Kanashi speech sounds. This is hoped 
to use further development of the language by means of codification of norms of the language, elaboration of the language in respect to its use in different social domains. Coming to the... <coughs> Just a minute. It's echoing. You please close it. Coming to the intelligibility of the language, the Kanashi language has. I'm feeling this. Too. Please close that because there is an echo. Hello? Yes. Uh, now, coming to the intelligibility of the language, the Kanashi language is not intelligible among the neighboring communities of Lahul Spiti area. Due to commercial reason, the people of Malana village have the communicative ability in Kulbi, the language of Kulu district, and also in Hindi. Though the people of Malana are found to be proficient in Kulbi, which is an Indo-Aryan language, Kanashi or the language of Malana is not intelligible to the Kulu speech community. The Malana people prefers to keep their Apna Bhasa, their own language, restricted to the domain of their own community. Now, coming to the uh, point of effort for promoting the language, Bombom Charitable Trust, a non government organization, has taken the initiative for development of the language and preservation of the culture of this speech community. The name of the filmmaker Sri Omlan Dotto is worth mentioning in this regard. A documentary film entitled Bomb One Day Ahead of Democracy has been produced by him where the traditional system of democracy consisting of two houses, upper house and lower house of the Malana village administration has been documented. Further effort like pro proposing script for the language, as I have already mentioned, preparing Kanashi grammar for school children and dictionary are ongoing works of the organization. Now coming to the question of ethnolinguistic vitality. As already mentioned, Kanashi language has been referred by UNESCO as indefinitely endangered. Language shrinkage and language loss especially for a language which has no written form is extremely alarming. When the members of the speech community are found to communicate in the languages other than their mother tongue in different domains of social life, shrinkage of their own language takes place, which makes the language endangered as chances of language loss, language death becomes imminent. Language shrinkage or loss results from the practice of constant language shift due to the pressure of dominant or neighboring language. The reasons of such language loss are varied. This can be socio-cultural, socio-economic, socio-political, so on and so forth. An attempt to draw a sociolinguistic profile of a community which has no written form and which has been already been declared endangered makes the study of ethnolinguistic vitality imperative. Now coming to the first point or uh, to examine the ethnolinguistic vitality or to have a uh, idea of the sociolinguistic profile of the uh, language, the, I, uh, the, I will uh, discuss uh, um, each points one by one. The first point, population and group dynamics. As mentioned earlier, Malana Valley is situated at a height of approximately 10,000 feet above the sea level, connected by mountain pass, Parvati Valley, and Chandrakohni Pass. I have already mentioned that. Access to the Malana village is really difficult as the village is not connected by roadways. Therefore, marginal access to the urban center for the people of Malana can be considered as one of the factors favorable for the maintenance of their language. Next is socio, the, the socio-economic or socio-political base of the speech community. 
the socio-economic base of the people of Malana village can be said to be the cultivation of marijuana. The best quality hashish are produced in this village, which is widely known as Malana cream in the commercial sphere. These plants are grown very naturally in this valley, but due to the present narcotic law of the country, there is no legal status of their economic sustainability. As regards agriculture, some cereals known as pitas are cultivated in a nearby place of higher altitude. This is a staple food of the people of Malana village. Pasturing is integral to the livelihood of the people of this village. Weaving of woolens from sheep wool are the age old domestic practices though this does not form the economic base of the community. Lack of opportunity of education has burdened these people to earn their livelihood from different other occupations. As the major eco uh, socioeconomic base of the community is confined to the valley, the situation is congenial for the maintenance of their mother tongue. Exposure to the urban center for the purpose of livelihood in Kulu has made them proficient in Kulvi. The impact of Hindi language is a recent development. For the Malana people, Hindi is preferred for broader socio-political and cultural interactions. Now, social domains in which the language is used. The community of the Malana village has a two-tier system for legislation and judiciary, the upper house and the lower house. I have already mentioned that. These are elected bodies. The administrative control of the village resides in these houses. The Kanashi language is used for all purposes of village administration, legislation, and judiciary. There is formal education system established by the government Hindi is the medium of instruction there, and Pulvi is also taught. But as the Kanashi language has no written form, there is no place of the language in the educational domain. Next, shifts in the domains of language use. The use of Kanashi in different domains of social life reveals that the language is frequently used by all the speakers informally in the village or home domain. Particularly, the older generation has no other language except Kanashi in their speech repertoire. Shift to Hindi is evident in case of interaction with the outsiders, especially in the formal domain. Shift to Kulvi is evident for commercial purpose. In the traditional religious domain, Kanashi is used exclusively. Coming to the next point, the status of the dominant neighboring uh, languages. The neighboring languages like Spiti or Lahuli has no impact on this speech community. Kulvi, the official local official language of Kullu district has a considerably dominant position in the Malana village. The use of the Hindi language is quite high among the Kanashi speakers. First of all, this is due to the official status of the language as a lingua franca of the country. And secondly, or more importantly, Hindi is the language of mass media and entertainment. Coming to intergenerational language transmission. Language transmission, that is handing over the norms and rules of language or mother tongue use to the future generation is considered integral for the survival of a language. The use of Kanashi, the mother tongue, in different domains of social life revealed the picture that the language is used frequently by all the speakers. As there is no instance of inter-ethnic marriage with the neighboring speech communities, no crisis is evident in the transmission of the mother tongue to the future generation. Coming to the next point, frequency and type of code switching or code mixing. Code mixing and code switching to Kulvi is a regular feature of the conversation of the Kanashi speakers. As regards code mixing, the influence of the Hindi language is evident in the, at the vocabulary level. 
it is alarming to note that most of the Kanashi speakers, especially those who belong to the younger generation, are not aware of code mixing in respect to the Hindi words in their conversation. Some people of older generation, of course, are conscious about this. It has been observed that the frequency of interference of the Hindi language is on the rise. Next is community members' attitude towards their own language. The members of the Kanashi speech community are not conscious about the maintenance or preservation of their language. Probably this is due to lack of interaction with the urban setup and the relative confinement of the community in such a remote valley. The members of the speech community neither feel the necessity nor do they show any initiative regarding codification of their mother tongue. The Kanashi speakers do not register any chance of language interference, shift or loss. Observation during field investigation reveals that these people believe in the natural continuous flow of the existence of their mother tongue. This belief is supported to some extent by the myth of Rakhasha and Jamodogni that centers around the story of the retention of their language, which I have already mentioned. The idea of the possibility of the loss of their language is not even agreed by the Kanashi speakers. Now, uh, next point, the social outlook of the neighboring communities regarding the speech community. The attitude towards one's mother tongue is not always dependent upon the collective perception of the speech community, but to some extent, it is also conditioned by the perception of the members or in other words, on the attitude of the other neighboring speech communities. At the governmental levels, institutional and individual efforts, which I have already mentioned, for the development of the language and documentation of culture show evidence in support of Kanashi. Support is yet to be had from the government level for the linguistic development of the speech community. Coming to institutional policies and attitude of the government towards the language, the need for documentation of Kanashi as an endangered language has captured the attention of government institution like Central Institute of Indian Languages, Mysuru, but nothing can be attested in favor of such attention till date. Bombom Charitable Trust, a non-government organization operating in Kolkata, Delhi and Kullu has taken some initiative and ongoing effort, which I have uh, mentioned earlier also, for codification and documentation of the language. Coming to type and quality of documentation of the language and the community. Documentation of the Kanashi language by introducing Roman script is a very recent ongoing effort for codification of the language by the present speaker. Description of some linguistic structure are available, of course, but that is not sufficient for the documentation and revitalization purpose of the language or for the uh, pedagogical purpose, language teaching purpose. Basic grammatical sketch for the school children and documentation of their indigenous knowledge is a need of the hour. Now, coming to the last point, availability of materials for language education and literacy. As already discussed, the language is not codified. So if no material has been produced in the Kanashi language for education and literacy, codification of language is a prerequisite for literacy in mother tongue. Now to sum up the discussion, the brief sketch of the ethnolinguistic profile of Kanashi divulges the fact that there is practically no systematic documentation of this speech community. Barring some very recent linguistic inquiries of Kanashi language like Saxena and Boring 2022, and some five different articles by Dr. Mojumdar from 2013 to 2021, no systematic objective investigation has been carried out regarding the speech community, codification and elaboration of their language, which are prerequisite conditions for revitalization and preservation of the language. 
no teaching med uh, material for the school children are available. Field investigation reveals that we uh, even do not have a proper anthropological description of the community. An account of the social structure and cultural description of the speech community of the Malana village is yet to be attempted. Therefore, for the development of this community, a detailed investigation of the language, society, and culture is a desideratum. Now, I show some pictures here, traditional house of the Malana village. Um, these are all made up of woolen, uh, wooden, sorry, wooden. And this is also made up of wood. And now I come to the acknowledgement part. I am extremely thankful to late Professor Ashok Kumar Dotto of Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, and Sri Omlan Dotto of Bombom Charitable Trust for initiating me in the present study and helping me to collect the data. I am also grateful to Shanta, a Kanashi speaker of the Malana village, uh, who was primarily my informant. I am grateful to my teacher, Professor Krishna Bhattacharjo, for her valuable suggestions at different points of time during the work. Uh, here is a picture. You can see Professor, late Professor Ashok Kumar Dotto. He accompanied um, me in the field, and he is Shanta, the, my primary inform, among other informants. He was the primary informant, Kanashi speaker. Uh, and uh, it is this is the uh, Malana village where we are sitting after our, we have completed our field work. And uh, these are the works which have been carried out as articles from 2013 to 2021. And thank you for your patient listening and namaskar to all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Datta Mazumdar, for this uh, very enlightening look uh, into the community and into the Ganashi community. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourselves and ask uh, our speaker for the day, please. Um, I would like to know uh, what was the community's um, attitude when you approach them for the field uh, for the first time? Were they reluctant or uh, were they welcoming? Yes, so let me tell you the situation. Uh, the uh, people of the Malana village, they are very much conservative. They do not accept the outsiders very easily. But 